welcome to the stage, Annabelle Kaye. As the Chief Elf Officer, my job is to report to you every year on how Santa's operations are going. And we've, I've got some updates for you. Who's heard the previous year's talks? Well, you remember the reindeer outsourcing project, the sending them to India? It did increase the output, but the wrong kind of output. So we finally got the reindeers back to the north where they belong. It's been fun, but not everything we do works out. Now we've got the ecology elves, and they're trying to make Santa more eco-friendly. They're worried about the methane, particularly after the Indian trip. We tried solar power. Didn't work very well, because Santa only delivers at night. Not the best project, really, and in the North Pole, we don't have a lot of solar power, so the eco project is struggling. <laughs> We're now thinking about having electrically powered sleighs. So we've got the eco elves out this winter putting recharging stations on every chimney because we've discovered that the range of an eco sleigh isn't very large. We discovered this on the test run when Santa had to do an emergency landing in South London. He was mugged. <laughs> he was not very impressed by that at all. But we hope we can improve our eco record as we go through the year. We've also committed to using less plastic in the toys. You may have noticed that in recent years there's been more and more plastic in what Santa and the elves deliver to you. <coughs> I don't have to mention the problems this is causing with the ocean, so we are going back to more traditional materials as soon as Elf and Safety have worked out how to carry heavier sacks, because wood is generally heavier than plastic. I will be updating you later when we get the technical specifications in. The, that's the Equality Elf has asked me to give you apologies for his or her absence. She is transitioning, or he is at the moment, and we're not quite sure where he is, <laughs> never mind what she or he is today. We've made some progress on equality, though. We have managed to run a survey on, could Santa be a woman? You may have noticed, but all the Santas are pale, male, and some of them are a little stale. And what we want to know is, would the Santa brand survive if Santa was female? Oops. Yay. Yes. Well, if you look at the videos on my Facebook page, you will see that children all over the world have said they've got issues with this. First of all, they don't believe Santa is strong enough to carry a sack. They feel that she might need an assistant to do all the heavy lifting for her. Others are terribly worried about whether Mrs. Santa could reverse park with the reindeer on the roof. <laughs> I do sympathise with that one. Parking manoeuvres can be challenging. We've decided not to rush the rebranding of Santa to a gender-neutral position in, in line with the times, but to go back and do more education work so that people can understand what women are really capable of. We're also going to research whether low-fat mince pies or gluten-free will be needed if Santa is going to be a girl, because we know some of us care more about our diets than Santa usually does. On another equality front, we've had some progress. We've had black Santas in Africa for quite some time. I don't know if you realise this, but we've got a first. We have our first black Santa in Atlanta. Not an easy gig, if you think this through. It's caused a meltdown, though, with the equality monitoring statistics because we have to anonymise certain data about race, religion and gender, even though we don't really know the gender of most of the elves. And it's almost impossible to anonymise data if you've only got one black Santa. Because the minute you say Santa's black, we all know who you mean. So we've sent this back to HR and data compliance who are working on an equality anonymization program that works for elves. 
complicated, I feel. Don't expect a quick report. You know what HR and compliance are like. That leads me to Santa's biggest challenge going forward. We've got problems with GDPR. First of all, Santa didn't know what it was. And for those of you who hang out with Santa and nobody else, that is the General Data Protection Regulations. They're coming fully into force in May next year. And Santa decided that he wasn't affected by them. Anybody with Santa on this, do you feel that this doesn't apply to you? Please put yourself on the naughty list straight away. <laughs> They do apply to Santa because the children that send their information to Santa are in Europe. And all it takes is for the individuals whose information he holds to be in Europe for him to be covered by the regulations. It doesn't matter that the North Pole is not part of the EU. That led me on to another problem. We had to do a data audit and find out where the information was held. Well, the stuff we hold directly in the North Pole is a problem. We're not part of the EU. So this is similar with the USA, but the USA has something called a data privacy shield. So if your data holders got that, you're probably going to be OK. But no one in the North Pole has got a shield. We're asking the toy elves to see if they can make one between now and May, but nobody's totally sure what the shield should look like. We're hoping the Information Commissioner Elf can help us out on that before it's too late. Children from all over the world send Santa letters, and you may realise this, but we've been a franchise brand for a very long time. We reach out to our marketplace through stores, and all of these stores get letters from children that they hand to Santa. So our data can be literally anywhere in the world. Not only that, kids are very tech savvy, aren't they? I know three-year-olds who were emailing Santa on iPads, telling them what they want for Christmas and where they live. Our email lists have got to be audited for security, but worse still, for those of you who like to play with children, for whatever reason, <laughs> you'll find you need parental or guardian consent to add a child to your list. Santa, of course, has got thousands of years' worth of lists with nobody consented at all, so this is causing a meltdown, and we have to sort out the list before we go live in May. We've had terrible problems with working out what consent means. Indeed, it's not uncommon with certain types of people to have no idea, is it? <coughs> Apparently, it confuses people whether people have said, yes, you may, or no, you may not. We are running remedial ed for a number of elves at the moment in the hope that they can tell the difference between yes, no, and maybe. But in the meantime, we've got to audit the list to see what the children agreed to. Because if the children only asked us to put them on the nice list, and we then send them a deluge of marketing emails, they have not consented to this. This applies equally to the adults. Did you know that there are adults on Santa's list? How many of you write to Santa every year? <laughs> Yeah, still hoping for that tall, dark, handsome man. I know, it's because you're on the wrong list. He will come. He will come eventually. <laughs> That's another one for the naughty list over there. The problem is, when we did our research, people are not permanently naughty or nice. It's quite possible for the naughty people to be nice, and the nice people sometimes naughty. It's not quite as clear cut as that. And now Santa's going to have to keep the data up to date because holding inaccurate data is going to be a problem. So the high tech elves have looked at this, don't you love your technology? And they've invented toys with Wi-Fi and cameras in them. You've probably got one in your home. About one third of households in the UK have such a product, and many more are planning to give them to their children for Christmas. 
Big problem. We teamed up with our friends from Apple and Google. And they started monitoring everything anybody said near the wonderful toys so we could update the naughty list and the nice list. Santa and Apple and Google are all just being fined massively. They're all on the naughtiness because surveying your audience to find out what they're up to without telling them and without letting them know will put you on the naughtiness. Behavioural marketers who know where you stand if you do not disclose what you're up to. The marketing elves, where are you, my darlings? They're in meltdown. Total meltdown. They like to do everything without consent. Or they like to feel that if we've said yes to one thing, we've said yes to everything. Doesn't always work out that way. And of course, they make elf magnets for all of us to sign up to, don't they? And what is marketing without an elf magnet, I ask myself. But unless you make it clear, and certainly Santa didn't, when you offer an elf magnet, that you're going to bury them in marketing material afterwards, that is not on either. Santa nearly fell off the roof when we told him about this, because he's always relied on his marketing elves to generate all the traffic that he needs. Not easy, is it, being Santa? We've got magical elves trying to figure out how we can get consent without necessarily using something called a double opt-in. I've tried to explain to the elves, marketing and not, what a double opt-in is, but they're struggling with this. Basically, it's asking people to do something twice. A bit like New York, so good they named it twice. <laughs> your, your offer is going to be so good that people say yes to it twice. This is a problem for the lower end of elf magnets, of course, because people didn't really want it once, and they certainly don't want to say they want it twice. There may be other ways to show that people have agreed to what you're doing, but so far, the Information Commissioner Elf hasn't given us the information we need. This means that we have got a whole army of elves standing by to deal with the consent issue. Think about it. All these elves are self-employed. You do know that we're not Santa's staff, don't you? They go out to all sorts of venues. Who's a training elf? Who goes out to help the stores make sure that Santa's on brand? Well, have we got equality training elves, marketing elves, haven't we? Not many GDPR elves, I guess. It's not a popular role. <laughs> when you go out, you get delegate data, don't you? Now, up until May, the data controller is the store because they've acquired all that data. And if they share it with you unlawfully, it's kind of the store's problem. But for May, it's the training elves' problem too. So if you are being sent information from people who are attending your Santa courses, you need to be sure that they've agreed with the store that it's okay to share the data with you. Because consent has to be clear, we've had problems with this. This is called third party consent to send data to a third party. We've tried to find a way to make it understandable to the children. The early tests have failed. When we said to them, would it be okay if we sent you to a third party? 28% of children had a tantrum because they hadn't been invited to a first or second party. <laughs> We're not quite clear how to communicate this to them. But it is one of our missions that we have to succeed with. Then there's a little issue of how long Santa keeps the naughty or nice list. He's a bit of a hoarder. Any else here like to hoard data just in case it's useful? I do feel a thousand years is a bit long. <laughs> the good news is, for some else anyway, that the protection for personal data only applies to living individuals. So those people have already passed on and got onto old Nick's list, not Saint Nick's list, have no protection. But then I guess you knew that anyway, didn't you? And anyone who's gone on to the opposite list, the nice list, the lovely celestial one, is equally not covered by these laws. Obviously everyone else is. 
and we're not terribly concerned about enforcement in the afterlife. We leave that to a higher power. I've tried to persuade Santa that he should only keep the naughty list for this year because the point of the naughty and the niceness is to decide who's getting presents this Christmas. It has no validity next year unless you can't qualify again. This remains moot and we're asking our legal department to clarify the status required for being on or off the naughty list and how one might qualify. It's only a question of time before some litigious child sues us and says they're on the wrong list. You can see this one coming. I've got my eyes on a little what's it in New York who's thinking about it as we speak. <laughs> Santa's problems with lists are not just where they are and why people are on them, but it's also how long he's storing them. He hasn't got a policy on how long it's relevant. I've been advising him that although the naughty and nights list might be short-lived, people who've had his product or people who've had advice from Santa, and I bet you don't know, Santa actually runs a consulting service called howtobecuddly.com. <laughs> Very popular with certain individuals in the room, as you can see. He should be keeping his data long enough to deal with product liability claims and that sort of thing. Any coaching elves in the room? Many of you belong to professional bodies, just like our elves, who require you to keep information for a specific amount of time. Nothing in GDPR is going to change that, but we're encouraging our elves to let people know how long that is. It's extraordinary how long these bodies vary. It's something to do with the fact the world's round and not everybody moves on at the same pace. Can't really figure it out. Santa doesn't just have a children's list. Santa has an adult list. I didn't even know it existed. Weirdly, it's the boys on the adult list who want dolls. I'm not quite sure about that one, but it's very important that we don't send the boys on the adult nice or naughty list the wrong information any more than we want the children to get what's offered to the naughty boys. This is definitely a no-no. We've had to make sure that all the elves have got their own logins because it's impossible to tell which of all the thousands of elves have done what if we're sharing logins. We've also had to encrypt the data because all those iPads and smartphones the elves use today are all over the world. Any elves in this room lost a phone this year? Was it encrypted? Did you have any information about individuals on that phone, elf? Please put yourself on the naughty step. <laughs> right, even if it's just their name and phone number, that is identifiable information about an individual. We've had terrible trouble with this. And the reason for this is not just elves lose things accidentally, but our next door neighbors are a pain. It's the gnomes. We can't stop them fishing. <laughs> and of course, if your data is encrypted, even if they get into your information set, it's much harder for them to get anything useful. We're not the only ones with dodgy neighbours, though, are we? Today, I saw something on the television when I was waiting to come on that said a large number of elves have been using virus protection software used, designed by the Russians. Do I have to point out the blindingly obvious security <laughs> risk that this presents? So be very careful of Russian gnomes and fishing gnomes because not everything is as it seems. What do we elves need to do between now and May to get this straight? We need to do an audit. Oh, I hate the word audit. I always get the accounting people to talk about stuff like that. But by an audit, I mean each elf has got to check what data we hold and why. We have to check whether we need it for some very specific reasons and needing it is not the same as I need cookies. It's something a bit more specific than that. And if it is stuff we're going to email to people and they're not existing customers, we have to figure out whether they've consented, not generally to being sent something that somehow justifies what we're doing, but to be sent that. Does that sound too tricky, my lovely elves, for you? Yeah. 
Yes. Too tricky. Yes. You collect data, you have no idea where it is. Is that tricky to find out where it is? No. You can do that there, can't you? Right? Can you figure out which people on your list of customers or not and have already had stuff from you? Can you do that bit? Can you therefore park, because you've got a lovely Christmas present coming up from the Information Commission Elf, and that is what the consent rules are going to be. Don't you just love Christmas? In my Christmas stocking will be 48 pages of regulations. <laughs> <laughs> Something to stuff the turkey with, I feel. A little bit of therapy there. But you will get that stuff, so if you know what that data is, you know what to do about it next. If you don't know how to create new user logins for the people, you do go back to your IT people or click help, create new user. If you don't know how to encrypt the devices you use, I don't wish to be patronising elves. You're very smart people. Google it. Almost every mainstream email system, operating system, Apple, Microsoft, has encryption as an option. If you are on the domestic option, you're using home software, they won't be there. If you are professional elves, you're going to need to upgrade to professional versions of things. Doesn't cost that much compared to a fine. How are we doing elves on this project? I've heard so many people arguing about what data protection means. The VA elves are up in arms about this. Anybody here use a VA elf? Yeah, because from May, they could be fined if they are accessing data unlawfully. And that means if you send them dodgy stuff, to put it into ELF speak, they've got a problem. So you will find it, you need to reassure your VAs that your data has been lawfully acquired and is being properly used. You can't just chuck stuff at them. And who are the LinkedIn scraping ELVs? I will bust you personally in the new year. There is no excuse for this. It's illegal now. It's a breach of the LinkedIn terms of business. It's also a breach of our common email marketing. Please put yourself on the naughty step and please make a real effort to get yourself off. The lead magnet elves can sort you out with that because they can get you stuff that people can send to. We are coming towards the festive season, and I do have a present for you, which I'm hoping our lo lovely sound engineer will put up. But he's gone into a coma because we're talking about love. <laughs> I do sympathise with you. The lovely Tiffany Kemp, you may have heard of her, who is our Chief Elf Negotiating Officer, amongst many other things, has agreed to do a special webinar for speakers on GDPR in January. It is absolutely free. All you need to do is sign up for it. If you do sign up for it, the marketing elves will not be getting their hands on your email addresses. You will be sent the link to join the webinar and a couple of reminders, because we're all busy and memory does fade, doesn't it? Um, the link for that is on that QR code up there, and the address is kktogo.com forward slash GDPR speak. If you want to get your head straight with this when you're sober, because now's not the best season for reason, is it? Uh, Tiffany and I will be live on the call. Our Christmas present to you is this free attempt to straighten you out without fear, without phobia and without panic. Please join us if you can and in the meantime Santa is going to help you, the elves are going to help you get your ducks in a row and wish you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you.